here to continue our conversation. Connell McShane, Deirdre Bolton, Executive Director at America Rising PAC, Alexandra Smith. Alexander, let's start with you. Um, you know, the, the, I, you know, I just had this conversation with Sarah, uh, and um, she's saying that uh, all of this chaos is distracting from President Trump's agenda and his success. But I, I put a lot of this on the media deciding what it wants to talk about and what it doesn't want to talk about. For instance, Friday, this amazing jobs report really was an amazing jobs report. As we were talking about it, I looked at all these screens and I saw only things about Stormy Daniels and saying, come on, one thing impacts every single American. It really matters. And the other one really doesn't. Sure. I mean, I think that on cable news and in different media outlets, the palace intrigue stories always do well. Um, that's what people want to talk about. Uh, but when I go home and talk to relatives and talk to other people, that's not the kind of things that they're talking about. And so I think that absolutely there's a disparity between what's being spoken about in the media and what voters are actually. When you go home, about. what are they talking about? Um, I think they're talking about tax reform. They're talking about the fact that they're seeing more money in their paychecks. Um, and they're, they're excited by the economic growth that's happening under this president and the Republicans in Congress. I think that's what most people are, are feeling. Yeah, and the president about. just made a very funny joke, right, with the Friends of Ireland. You know, everything saying, but trade. Everything but trade, everything <laughs> but taxes, because you have them pretty low there at 13% corporate tax yeah. rate. And that's a lot of the reason why the president was trying to get our corporate tax rate lowers, because a lot of our tech companies were going to Dublin, setting up shop, yeah. saying, hey, this is our head Quarters, so uh, yeah. I like the little comedic stylings yeah, 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 at the end. Good. But the, although the point realistically, is well they taken. were renting like a room inside a building, right? I think one building had 29, uh, you know, headquarters or whatever. No, but legitimate. They did have workers, but much yeah. fewer yeah. than yeah. than here. And 13 percent is a lot more agreeable to pay than our former tax rate for corporations, right. which was 35 percent. So it's your point, yeah. Certainly, and taxes EU coming out uh, perhaps, uh, and you, this is your beat, but yeah. uh, looking at uh, special taxes on these big tech names, in part, I think to get you know that three percent tax. Maybe we'll get talk about that later at some yeah. point but mm -hmm. you know the so-called chaos uh, Connell I, I listen maybe it does you know catch eyeballs and it's maybe it's good clickbait <laughs> uh, but I think there's another a nefarious aspect to it as well some weeks uh, more than others I mean I think some weeks are truly chaotic and some weeks are exaggerated to use the president's term from uh, from earlier but Sarah Westwood was on with you earlier did hit on a key point some some of this is managing it from the White House's point of view and at times I think she's right that they have not done the best job of managing that in terms of if you want to if you want to control a news cycle to use our terminology that yeah maybe you want to avoid making an announcement or a tweet at a certain time and keep those things in control I, tell you, I just got back from Pennsylvania and covering that uh, special election race out there and the president which is one of the things that I find interesting because I think maybe people are overreading this race and the result of it the president's still very popular in that particular district in Pennsylvania at least from the people I'm speaking to and I think the polls uh, pretty much bear that out but Connor Lamb won and won that district and he did it you know by being a different type of a candidate but not not necessarily by capitalizing on some sort of sentiment that is now anti-Trump that had right. been pro-Trump. Right. So a lot of these things, to your point, do get um, kind of overplayed a little bit. But um, at the same time, there, <laughs> there have been some weeks like we've never seen in terms of staff changes. And you forget what happened on Monday by the time you get to Friday. There's so no doubt about that. The so-called news cycle is, uh, it's, you know, it's not 24 hours. So you, you know, you can measure it before in days and you measure it in minutes. <laughs> these, these, the, but again, we never had a... a, a, a um, a businessman in the White House. And we saw this even on the campaign trail, President Trump making command decisions very swiftly and ultimately it worked out for him. And, and you know, Pennsylvania, again, it's, you know, people are talking about that election and that election outcome, but I'm not so sure it was a, a referendum on the president. Well, I don't think it was either, because if you look at the number of votes that um, Rick Saccone got vis-a-vis uh, -vis Trump's votes uh, in 2016, he got much, you know, much fewer votes than Trump did, actually. But I think that PA-18 is absolutely a huge wake-up call for Republicans. Um, I think that it, it... What will they do different? Well, look, I mean, it, it was easy to get complacent after 2016, the surprise victory, um, and then just sort of the unending Hillary tour of excuses. Uh, but then... Right, you but will they... Will they move closer to President Trump or further from President Trump? Well, I think that the one thing you really have to account for is it renewed Democratic enthusiasm. Um, there's yeah. a real grassroots effort out there um, that's excited, that wants to be involved and is mobilized, um, and they certainly did so in, in PA 18. Yeah, it'll be come down to can it always comes down to candidates, but I think there is something to that in Pennsylvania right. 18 that we really learned is that Connor Lamb was a good candidate uh, for that district, and even though the president won it by 20 points, I spoke to um, a woman there yesterday. Yesterday, for example, who was out and said uh, that 
he was a better candidate. It's a simple way of saying it, but he was a better candidate in this district than Hillary Clinton was in 2016. Simple as that. So he won back voters that might have been registered sure, and trended towards sure. the Democratic Party for years that didn't want to vote for Hillary Clinton A charismatic former so, Marine prosecutor, yeah. pro-guns, anti-abortion, pro-tariffs. I yeah. mean, he spoke the Trump language for yeah, sure. Yeah, and even House Speaker Paul Ryan saying, like, listen, this guy is a unicorn, but also admitting that he it does need be, to be... Well, might not well, be. There might be more candidates tailored to districts if the Democrats but are I also, smart but about I, I, I don't know if they, sorry, I don't know if they can necessarily get there um, because you have, like I said, this mobilized Democratic enthusiasm, right. but at the same time, it's pushing the party to the progressive wings. Right. Look in Texas where the DCCC intervened yeah, um, against a Bernie out. Sanders, yeah. ba you know, backed candidate. Now sure. they're left with a Bernie Sanders candidate and um, a candidate that they're now backing that is opposed by the union. I just think there's a lot of blurred lines, right? President Trump appealed to a lot of independents and a lot of people who yep. sometimes even would have voted for sort of a yeah. And maybe we're just looking Democrat. too deeply into this one unique situation because Connor be. Lamb was a unique candidate. Thank you all very much.